Hi, this is Bill, and today's topic is, you're a scientist, how can you think like that? So, yeah, yeah. Um, when I was working at a Bellevue today, there's a couple guys I know, one of them's a USC professor, I think he's in the political science, uh, specializing in, in war, and the other guy is also like an economist at UCLA. And so, um, anyway, <laughs> I told him I voted for Trump. <laughs> and one thing I'm really excited about is that he's chosen, uh, you know, Robert Kennedy Jr. to head the uh, Health and Human Services Department, the HHS. I think this is really awesome. And uh, apparently I didn't know this, but I, I guess academia hates RFK Jr. <laughs> this is what, what he uh, told me. So, you know, we were discussing um, this stuff. You know, he's, um, as you know, he's concerned about what all the damage, the uh, additives to food and, and vaccines, you know, of course, vaccines are doing to people. So... Anyway, after having a discussion about this, and, and of course he's debunking uh, Kennedy's uh, belief that vaccines cause autism, he, he kind of just said, okay, um, you're a scientist. And said, how, how, he, he, he says, uh, I mean, how can you believe this stuff this guy's saying? Because they apparently think it's nonsense. So I said to him, I said, well, this is where I'm coming from. Um, first of all, uh, RFK wasn't even interested in, in uh, pursuing or prosecuting uh, vaccine cases, but he had so many women come up to him and, and say that, you know, their child got vaccinated and, you know, and developed all these problems. And so now I think he got ahead and litigated some cases. But I said this to him, this is how I feel about this, <clears throat> which is why I'm excited about Kennedy being in, in, in that department, is that in 1960, there was about one in 10,000 uh, kids being diagnosed with autism, you know, and today now it's like one in 50, it's one in 22 boys. They said, that's a huge increase. And, and I think we should want to find out why. I mean, maybe Kennedy's hypothesis is wrong, but I still think, you know, this is a major health concern and we should find out why. And maybe this is where my conspiratorial side starts to come in here because I get this feeling that nobody really wants to know why. You know, there seems to be no interest in investigating this. And, and I, it is where, um, you know, I get it is that if they do link these, the autism to um, vaccines or, or maybe something in the food we're eating or the mother's eating while she's pregnant, um, you know, that's, you know, um, that's going to cost these uh, industries billions of dollars and they would just rather sweep this all under the rug. I mean, let's face it, no um, parent is going to see their child struggling in school and then get this uh, autism diagnosis, which means now he's got this, you know, it's guaranteed he's going to have to deal with this for the rest of his life. And if there's something being put in our food or, or injected in our bodies that, that's making a high likelihood or prevalence of this happening, then, um, you know, I, I think people would like to know that and then stop doing it. And he said to me, he, he said, you know, he actually agreed with me. He said, yeah, you know, I, I agree with that, that we should try to find out. And, and kind of took a position, he actually kind of said that, yeah, my feel, that I, I have a reasonable position here. And it's kind of funny, he was telling me, he says, in academia, I live in a bubble all the time, and I appreciate talking to someone like you, you know, so I could get a perspective on the other side, <laughs> which uh, I wish I'd send this to him. I, I said, well, yeah, maybe you need to think outside the bubble. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, wow, it makes me feel, gee, is, is, um, is academia that monolithic in thought? I mean, that's scary. To me, I mean, like I work at a Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and it, it, it's pretty uh, one-sided, you know, pretty much in line with the academia thinking. But you know, you're probably gonna find ten percent of the people there that, have a, you know, like me, that has a differing, differing view. So, uh, yeah, um, that, that, so that's why I'm excited about about Kennedy being involved. Hey, yeah, it'd be good to find out. Um, you know what what's going on here now you know i i even looked this up on the internet 
and you just hear a bunch of hypotheses, like one of them being is that an official diagnosis for for autism, I, I guess, was or you know a method uh, criteria, say method for this, was first introduced to the DSM, which is a diagnostic manual for the uh, for psychology in like 1980, and that's of course when these cases took off. Which, which of course also coincides with uh, you know the changes in our food supply and, and also with the vaccines. And let's say I'm not saying uh, correlation is causation here, but you know one thing I think of uh, I do kind of agree with one thing that probably di uh, autism was underdiagnosed in my day. Um, however, I, you know we should we, we should be able to quantify this in my opinion. I mean I don't know why you can't take. Um, you know, a, a population of people that are now over 50, at least before we all die out, and and apply this uh, DSM standard and see how many people these people would be uh, considered autistic. Believe me, autism is not that subtle. I mean, I got it myself, and I'm considered probably mild by comparison, but it's not subtle, and, and I see it in other people too. So I, I don't think this would be hard to diagnose, and I don't think it would be yeah, I think we could at least quantify that. Okay, did we underdiagnose it by a factor of ten? Possible. I mean, but still, even a, a factor of ten, you know, we've, you know, we're seeing like almost what, like two thousand fold increase in this since, say, the the nineteen sixties. So anyway, um, that's really all I have for today. And well, yeah, just a little bit more I want to say is, is that. You know, if you quantify this, and you know, let's say that as Kennedy pretty much reiterates, he says he doesn't remember seeing so many kids having these problems when he was in school, and neither did I, for that matter. So, um, so if you quantify this, then we can try to find out what's causing this. And hey, maybe it'd be cool to put the uh, pharma industry against the chemistry industry, you know, the chemical industry, like Monsanto. Say that, you know, it's your product that's given these kids autism, and of course they're going to say your product's given your kids autism. And maybe, you know, maybe we'll get to the truth of this, and, and we can make our food better and make our country healthy again. So yeah, I love that Robert Kennedy is is ahead of that. I mean, I, I was planning on voting for him until he uh, basically dropped out of the race and endorsed Trump. So so that actually made me excited about endorsing Trump. I, I think it's cool. You know, Trump's got Gabbard and Musk all on his side too. I, I think these are cool people. So anyway, that's all I got for you today. Like, you know, like, subscribe, share, give comments. Um, I'd like to hear what you think. Thank you.